it's going to be one of those days. Yeah, definitely full of old gunk in there. All right, without looking at a parts diagram, I think that's the way it goes together. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. So first thing today, I'm going to change the oil in the Case 730 tractor. Let's see if we can get it started. I had a battery maintainer on it, so it should be charged up. Cross your fingers. Woo! <laughs> oh, man. gonna be one of those days. I think the battery's just weak. Let's see if we can get it jump started with the truck. <coughs> Man, that diesel smoke's like all the way, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's like coming out of the carport. It's like billowing out. Let's see if I got any jumper cables in the livestock barn. Well, they're covered with cobwebs, but I do have some. Oh, they're marked backwards. I better pay better attention. See, that's got a red band on it. That's actually the ground going to the tractor. Why would they put a red band over the one going to the ground? Let's try this again the correct way. Here we go. Come on. You know what? I had somebody tell me in the past video to try ether starting fluid, and I always thought that that was for, it, in a, you know, like gasoline engines. I didn't know you could actually use it starting fluid on a diesel since it's got compression. Um, so let me see if I can find some. I think I have some right there, starting fluid. I actually didn't buy this. I found it on the property when we bought the property. It's been laying around for like what five six seven eight years now so i thought you had to have a spark plug for starting fluid to work and apparently it works on diesel tractors so we're gonna we're gonna test that out today but that is something that i learned from the comments that you guys write so i'm always learning something new do not use with glow plugs well i'm pretty sure the case tractor doesn't have them or they don't work and uh, don't flood the engine before using well we probably did that spray it into the carburetor or air intake We'll have to go with the air intake. So right there is the air intake and it goes back through this oil bath here. It's like a filter, it's what they use for an air filter and then it went in. Try to spray some in there. All right, I think this is attempt number five. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the case tractor warm up for a few minutes. And I wanna show you something. I buy a lot of used equipment off of people and off of auctions and stuff like that. And sometimes I wanna fix them up the way they are. Sometimes I wanna just take them and modify them. And I've got one, I'm not sure what I wanna do with. Let me show you. So I bought this grader blade. I think it's a six foot grader blade. It's, it's a three point grader blade. It needs to be 26 inches if I try to fit it on that case tractor. Oh, and it is not gonna work. It needs to be 26 inches from this point here all the way to that point right there. And it is closer to 27 and a quarter. So it doesn't look like I'll be able to use that on the case tractor. I'll be, use, I'll be able to use it on the other three tractors. But the question is, should I take this and um, put a hydraulic cylinder on it and make it hydraulic pivot? I've got the, the hydraulic top link that I've got and I could modify this for that to perfectly fit in there and to be able to uh, pivot the blade from the, the cab of the tractor. The other choice would be just to strip this completely down and just use the blade and add it to a skid steer attach to put it on the loader of the tractor and make like 
a kind of like a bulldozer blade or a snow blade for the front of the tractor. So um, let me know what you guys think. It's only six feet wide, so it's not gonna be the full width of any of my tractors except for the 24 horse. That would be the only one that would, it would actually be wider than the tractor. And on a greater blade, I think it helps for it to be wider because as soon as you angle it, it's actually, it's actually got a smaller space that it plows. You know, so um, let me know what you think, how I should end up using that in the future. All right, go ahead and put it high here. Maybe too fast. Oh yeah, that's pretty fast. Better. Another tip I learned in the comments, put down some cardboard first. I guess 15 sixteenths. Oh, nope, I was wrong. Ah, one inch. I was close. So here on the left side of the tractor, this housing right here, that's the oil filter. It's got like a, a canister filter on the inside. Um, seven eighths. Oh man, I'm 0 for two today. All right. There we got a rubber washer right on top. Yeah. Then we have our cartridge filter. Oh, there must have been another rubber washer because it just fell in the pan. Oh, it was more than a rubber washer. There it is. So on the inside was the spring and a metal washer. Looks like they're kind of attached. So I see if there's anything else I dropped in the oil. It's nice and warm. Oh, there it is. Another washer of some type. So on the inside where the oil filter mounts, there is a flat gasket or flat O-ring inside. I think we'll have a new one. So here's the old filter. It was a Case brand filter. And I found a Napa replacement, 1475. So looks like the same canister. And then it does come with the flat O-ring and then it comes with two gaskets as well. So since we're doing oil change, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this, this oil breather apart. And uh, this is like an oil bath in here and the air comes through. And I think it basically goes through that oil to catch any dirt and debris and then goes into the engine. And um, there's just like a oil reservoir in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it out, clean it up and change it. You know, I don't think I've ever taken this off on this tractor before. There we go. It's usually pretty grimy on the inside of there. It's probably years and years of debris building up. I may need a putty knife. Yeah, definitely full of old gunk in there. But there's a couple pounds of gunk in here. Like I said, I've never taken this apart. I think there's actually more to this. So when you look underneath here, you can see there's some kind of a screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out as well. So it looks like about a inch and a half thick screen that's in there. I think I'll just go ahead and clean that out as well. And above that is like a steel wool style filter that's filling up kind of the inside of this and I'm not even going to attempt to take that out. So I think I'm just going to spray this out with some brake cleaner just to get some of the gook out of it. Using brake cleaner because I know it'll evaporate real quick. So I think I've taken it as far apart as I want to. I've got everything cleaned up. I think I'm ready to start putting the oil back in, put the oil filter and everything on. So this is what I'm going to be using today. This is a mobile 
15W40, and this is made for diesel engines. This is the same oil that I put in the TYM tractors. So should work fine in here. This did have a straight 30 weight oil, a non-detergent 30 weight oil. It got real thick in the winter time, made it hard for it to turn over, hard for it to start. And I'm hoping that this lighter oil, it'll start better in cold weather. So this is what we're gonna be putting in the engine. As for the, uh, the breather here, um, a lot of times people will just take used motor oil and they'll put in there because it, all that oil is doing is trying to catch any dust and debris from the air and, and grab it in that oil so it doesn't go into the engine. So it doesn't have to be anything really special. Um, but considering this is 30 weight, straight 30 weight oil, I don't want to put that in there and it, and it be too thick in the winter time. So I'm, I've, so I'm just going to put some regular pins oil in there. I've got some 5W30. I'm just going to put it in that oil pan for the breather and that should work just fine. There's an oil fill line along the side. I don't know if you can see it. So now I gotta do this without spilling it. All right. All right, we're gonna start putting our oil filter together. So you got this long bolt. There is like a some type of piece of rubber or something that's on this bolt. I don't have a new one, so I'm just gonna use what's there. So it slides in. I'm gonna say the spring goes next. I think I'm gonna turn it with this side up. And then we've got our hard washer. We're gonna put our oil filter on. And then on top of that, we put our rubber washer. Maybe. Get in there. All right, without looking at a parts diagram, I think that's the way it goes together. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in this flat O-ring where the oil filter goes. So this tractor actually came with our property when we bought it. There was two tractors that was at the property and they asked if we wanted, they tried to include it in on the price of the property. And I knew nothing about tractors at the time. I said, all I wanted was a tractor with a brush hog so I could at least mow the property because it was so overgrown. And this is the tractor that they left here for us to keep with the property. And the other tractor was actually a Farmall 806, and that was actually a lot bigger tractor. And now that it's now that I know tractors a little bit better, I wish I would have probably got both tractors with the property. I probably could have um, for probably the same price, but I told him I just wanted one tractor. And um, hindsight's 2020, but uh, this is this is what came with the property. It looks exactly the same as the day I we bought the property in 2015. It never had any fenders on it. People told me it's supposed to have fenders. Didn't have any on it. Um, the, the seat, everything's like in the same condition that it was the day I bought it. I haven't really done anything to fix this thing up. And you don't see these fixed up very often. You don't actually find these where somebody's taking the time to, to go through it. It's, it's not like one of the sought after tractors like a Farmall or a John Deere, one of the older ones that people like to restore. So, you know, one of these days I may actually go back and try to repaint this tractor and make it look a lot neater, try to bring it back up to the way it was supposed to look. But honestly, the way it looks right now, it's got like a patina to it, a little bit of rust and everything. And um, I actually kind of like the way that it looks. So let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and start this up and uh, get it running. Here we go. Let's 
go ahead and take it out for a spin. So I guess now I'll just have to wait for a cold day and see if I could get it started, see if it starts any easier. At least I've got the, uh, I left the jumper cables out here and I've got the starter fluid out here. Now, last year I bought this magnetic heater. It magnetizes to the oil pan and it plugs in. And I tried that and I couldn't even tell the difference that the oil pan even got hot or warmed up at all. It still felt like outside temperature. So I don't know if this just doesn't work that well or, or what, but I tried this oil pan heater or engine block heater, whatever you want to call it, and it did not work. At least I wasn't impressed with it. Um, so I know I had a subscriber send me a couple of heaters and I think they, they attach to the oil pan with adhesive or something. They're different. And um, I may try putting those on there and heating this oil pan up if it still has trouble starting. But uh, time will tell. Well, since I'm already covered with oil and stuff from working on a tractor, I might as well just go back to the workshop and tear apart a little bit more on the Alice Chalmers. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this housing off the bottom here. This is what the snap coupler attaches to. I know there's a big coil spring on the inside. I think that's captive. I don't think it's gonna come out. But I'm just going to see if I can drop that off, get everything off the bottom of the transmission and the power director. Okay, they're going to be those kind of bolts. Oh, man. I'm going to knock the whole tractor off trying to get that bolt out. So this is one of those times that a half inch impact isn't big enough. Like you wish you had like a three quarter or one inch impact to take off some of these really tight bolts. And this is just on jack stands here in the back. And I know a lot of people did not like that. And I hate to really pry on this too hard because I'm afraid that maybe I'd knock it off the jack stands. So I'm gonna have to get a cheater bar, see if we can get it broke loose. It's about a five foot cheater bar. That ought to get it right. Oh, there she went. Before I drop the whole thing out, I think there's a little bracket here I can take off. So now that I got that cover off, I can see that there's a, a linkage in here. I just got a pin that I need to pull out of here, and then I should be able to drop this whole assembly off the bottom of the tractor. I think it's going to be fairly heavy. It'd be nice to rig something up here to help hold the weight. It's all loose, let's see if we can get it to come out. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh, she is heavy. So here's what that assembly looks like out of the tractor. So you've got your brake pedals here, and of course this one is gonna go straight back and do the right brakes. This one goes through the shaft over here and then it actuates the left hand brakes. And then up here you would have the snap coupler attached right there. 
and then you've got a big coil spring right here in the middle. So hopefully you can tell how dirty that assembly was. I need to get that off clean so I can get it painted. There's no way I could clean that while it was still on the tractor. And then that was keeping me from cleaning the underside of the transmission. So now I can get the underside of that cleaned up and uh, that'll be something that I'll be working on next. So I'm glad I got that done today. So apparently today was work on old tractor day and um, it was a pretty good day to do it. I was, I was wanting to use the warm weather to get the case started but yet it is a gloomy cloudy day as well and it's still pretty wet from all the rain we got the other day yesterday and it's going to rain it's going to start actually raining i think here in a little bit it's going to rain tonight as well uh definitely do need the rain but uh it was a good day to to work on tractors but i think that's probably going to be it for this video um i need to get cleaned up because me and rebecca are going to go out on a date night tonight so we're going to end up getting the animals moved from the pasture back in the barnyard get them locked up for the night and then we get to finally go out and uh, see if we can get some dinner and uh, we don't get to do that very often um, typically i am either at my full-time job through the week or i'm here working on these projects all weekend long and uh, i typically only time i ever leave is when i need to go get material for a project so it'll be nice to actually get to go out and uh, have some dinner together and have a little bit of a date night but anyway, I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.